everyone. I'm Scott Wilson, the Regional Trauma Coordinator for the Metrolina Trauma Advisory Committee, or MTAC as most people know it. I'd like to share a project that the MTAC EMS Subcommittee and I have been working on, on standardizing EMS radio reports when transporting trauma patients to our region's trauma centers. If you recall, we have been requesting that bedside reports for traumas use the MIST format, which has had great results. If you don't remember this or haven't heard of it, we ask that you start using this method when giving trauma bedside reports. As a reminder, this is an easy way to give a quick, concise bedside report with all the information that the trauma team needs. MIST stands for mechanism, including age, sex, and time of injury, injuries, vital signs including highest heart rate, lowest blood pressure, and lowest GCS, and treatment performed. The same standardization can be done for radio notifications to the trauma centers with obvious modifications, which we'll get into next. You may not realize it, but we have seven trauma centers in the MTAC region. Seven different trauma centers, seven different intake or pre-hospital notification forms. I know there's only six up there, but CMC and Levine Children's use the same form, so that makes seven. These forms help guide their decision-making process on what resources are needed to be activated based off the report that you give. When it comes to EMS, there are just as many methods of notifying the hospitals of your impending arrival found. So what do all these have in common? These items are on every single one. And if you've looked at the field triage guidelines, they're also there. If you look deep in your protocols or destination policies, they're probably somewhere in there as well. Why? These are the things that the data supports to determine how sick a trauma patient is. They help predict outcomes. And for the last two items, they help the trauma team guide their plan. Specifically, we know that different ages of patients result in different vital signs, normal value ranges to base our differentials off of, but they can also give us clues. For example, we increase our thresholds for hypotension in geriatrics due to the common history of hypertension and the heart's inability to compensate. Why do we include gender? Females have been shown to have fewer complications and lower mortality after trauma than similarly injured males. But in some cases, brain injuries for example, women have higher mortality rates. There are also certain physiological differences between the genders to consider as well. Mechanism, self-explanatory, but a gunshot wound is treated differently and has different injury physiology than a fall, which is different from an MVC, which is different from a pedestrian struck. We know that our heart has to work harder in response to lower blood pressure, be it due to hypovolemia or other causes. So heart rate is concluded in shock indexes. In short, if your heart rate is higher than your systolic blood pressure, that's likely bad for the patient. For blood pressure, studies have suggested that lower blood pressure in a trauma patient may be indicative of hypoperfusion and is associated with poor patient outcomes. And again, consider the shock index. An elevated shock index has been shown to correlate with increased likelihood of, of inpatient admission, mortality, and other outcomes like massive transfusion activation and traumas. GCS shows us how well perfused the brain is, if the patient is alert enough to maintain their airway, and if there is potential for injury to the brain. Treatment performed, this helps prioritize what needs to be done upon arrival to the ED, 
as well as gives the emergency team another piece of the puzzle on how sick the patient is. Were those vital signs after obtaining vascular access and administering fluid or blood? Did the patient require airway intervention? And so on. ETA. Does the ED and trauma team need to walk or do they need to run in order to prepare for you? Also, in cases like cardiac arrest, that can also give them an estimate of downtime or in the setting of a tourniquet being placed, limb ischemia time. Here, I'd like to share a recommended template which is based off what is recorded on the pre-hospital forms we saw earlier. In it, we identify who we are, who we are transporting to, and if transporting to certain facilities, which care provider we want to speak to. When transporting to CMC, Levine Children's, Presbyterian, and Cleveland, they ask that you specify if you want to speak to a nurse or a doctor depending on patient acuity. Emergent cases ask for a physician, non-emergent ask for a nurse. If the trauma center you are transporting to or your agency doesn't use this terminology, you don't have to use it, it's adaptable. Given a heads up of how far you are out at the start lets the trauma team know, again, if they need to walk or run when preparing for your arrival. And then patient demographics allows for proper categorization when it comes to their criteria for activation based off the rest of your report. After you give mechanism of injury and major injuries, vital signs drive activation criteria and should include highest heart rate, lowest blood pressure, and lowest GCS. You may be asked to list out where you took points off of if your GCS is not 15, so be prepared. If appropriate, you can also include other pertinent vital signs here. Including treatment performed also guides activation criteria and can help the team leader at the hospital prioritize their plan when you arrive. Then finishing off your report by reminding the hospital how far out you are and you can close the loop by asking if they have any questions or some people like to ask if there are any other orders. There are also other important items such as blood thinner use and if appropriate, it can really be placed anywhere, but the easiest location would likely be after mechanism. For example, the patient fell and struck their head and she is on blood thinners. Using this template checks all of the hospital's boxes so they can make an informed decision based off all the information that you give them. So here's an example of how it would flow. EMS 1 to Hospital X requesting a physician for a priority trauma. We are 10 minutes away with a 50 year old male who was in a high speed MVC with entrapment. The patient has a possible femur fracture and laceration to his face. His highest heart rate was 130, lowest blood pressure was 90 over 50, and lowest GCS was 14. We have an IV established his leg is in traction and he is in spinal precautions. We will be there in 10 minutes. Do you have any questions? So based off that template, we first wanted to see if EMS agencies in our region already gave this information in their reports and if there actually was any need for standardization. As you can see, we recorded over 400 trauma-specific radio reports across almost every agency around our region. We have a lot, by the way, as well as across our region's trauma centers. Further breakdown of the types of calls to show that it was a diverse representation of patients is over on the right. If you like data and charts, here's a basic breakdown of what was heard. Blue is good, orange and green is not so good, meaning they did not say it or it had to be prompted. As you can see, while we excelled in some areas, there were others that we have an opportunity to improve upon. 
and trying to standardize reports may help that process. To summarize the categories, we did pretty good about half the time, but not so good the other half. Reach out to me if you're interested in a deeper dive into the data. So now looking at it a little bit closer in specific areas. Again, a good number of, the, of our areas were decent, but there were also a few opportunities for improvement. As you know, at CMC, LCH, Novant, Presbyterian, and Cleveland, is requested that EMS ask for a position for high priority calls. This often does not happen, as you can see. Also, we recommend that you start off with ETA in addition to ending with it. That way it's heard twice, leading to less having to be asked of you and less having to have you repeat your ETA later, which is probably one of the most frequently asked questions by the receiving hospitals. Now, when it comes to specifics about the patient, vital signs was probably the area with the most room for improvement. Remember to say your highest heart rate, lowest blood pressure, and lowest GCS, which often was not done. When comparing emergent with non-emergent patients, the same areas were consistently shown to be lacking, but reporting treatment performed was actually one of the most important areas that was left off. This is really important for our triage nurses so they can have a good idea of where to put our patients. And finally, don't forget blood thinners. These can be a game changer and an important fact to leave. So what are we asking you to do? Of course, first, use the recommended template. Believe it or not, we sometimes call the wrong hospital, so identifying who you are and who you are calling is just good practice. To help with making sure you talk to the right person, try to ask for either a nurse or a physician, especially when calling CMC, Levine Children's, Novant, and Cleveland. Give your ETA at the beginning and at the end helps the team prepare. Vital signs are an important driver. Based on acuity means if this is a low priority trauma, it's acceptable to give your latest vital signs as opposed to the highest and lowest that are given in to emergent patients. Even on non-emergent patients, SANE interventions can help the triage nurse better prepare. For example, a patient in a C-collar needs to be assessed by a physician and can't just go to triage. Blood thinners can change everything. Let us know. An early notification helps, even on that transfer patient. And when calling for a pediatric patient, try to include a Brosler color or patient weight, which can help the PEDS team better prepare. So to finish up, we ask that you try to use this template when calling in trauma patients. It will help you help the trauma centers, and ultimately help the patient. Identify who you are, who you're calling, and who you want to talk to along with what's going on. Tell the hospital how far away you are along with patient demographics and what's wrong with them. Include vital signs and treatment performed, and close it out with your ETA and asking for questions or orders. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.